with me to the New Testament. We're going to find our way back to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. We'll begin reading with verse number 1. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. When he, I want to remind you, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou, tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. We look back at, at verse number 2, and we find the phrase that we identified uh, last time. And the phrase is, Lord, if thou wilt. Lord, if thou wilt. So what he's saying is, Lord, if it's your will. If it's your will. That's what the leopard said. The leper said. Let's pray. Father, we need you tonight. We need you to take your word and cut us with it. Know the thoughts and intents of our hearts tonight and change them to be yours. We cannot do that in of ourselves. Just like this leper could, not, leper could not heal himself. We cannot change our heart. We need you tonight. We need your Holy Spirit to be very thorough with us. Showing us if we could get hold of this passage of Scripture here and the truths that we find that the, the leper executed here, it would greatly help us. We need you to open up our eyes. We need your word to have free course tonight. We want to say yes to you. What you speak to us about, would you, would you do that, Lord? And we'll thank you for what you do in our hearts and lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As a reminder, there, there are some things that we know are the will of God that we said this morning. We talked about that. Uh, we know that from the Word of God. It tells us. Uh, one of the things we use as an example is salvation. And we talked about 2 Peter 3, 9, that uh, the Lord's word assures us that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So that's his will. It's not, he's, his will is not anybody die and perish, that means go to hell. But his will is that every man could have life and life more abundant. That's his will. And so if knowing his will, if any man would believe on and receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, Jesus would save them. Because that's his will to do, is to save any man and every man. By the way, it's possible that every person on this earth right now can get saved today. Potential. Jesus has paid for it. But specifically, every man on this world, in this earth, on this globe, will not get saved today. Because they will not believe. They will not agree with God about themselves and about what he's done, and that is sufficient for them. Got to make it your own. It's got to become your faith. So there's also some things that we would like for the Lord to do in our life, outside of salvation, that we know is the Lord's will. But these things, we don't know if it's the Lord's will or not to do them in our life. Now, this was the case with the leper in our text. He wasn't sure if the Lord would heal him, but he asked the Lord if he would heal him. He didn't have any exact promises that guaranteed that the Lord was going to heal him. So he said, Lord, if thou wilt, this is what I want. If it could be thy will, do this for me. And what can we do or what should we do when we find ourselves in this situation? And most likely... You're probably in a situation like that. There's something you desire from the Lord, but you're not really sure if it's the Lord's will or not. And you find yourself, I hope, like we talked about this morning, taking our desires to the Lord, approaching the Lord with our desires. We talked about that in verse 1 and part of verse 2 there, 
Um, and we said that this leper showed us this morning that, um, that we must approach the Lord no matter the circumstances. What was surrounding this situation? There was a multitude of people around Jesus. They were following Jesus. They were with him. And the leper could have just thought, there's no way I'm going to get to Jesus. So I'm not even going to try. I'm going to live here in solitude and die in my leprosy. I'm sure he's glad that he went through the circumstances. <laughs> he has a bad obstacle too, the fact that he was a leper. He wasn't supposed to get around anybody and he wasn't supposed to be that close where Jesus could have actually heard him over a multitude, but he did and he got Jesus' attention and talked with him and he could overcome the circumstances that he was surrounded by and the obstacle of his own leprosy. And then we saw that we, uh, he approached the Lord reverently. We said it with his body language, he had reverence toward the Lord. He worshiped him, and we found that that was, he fell on his knees, and then he fell on his face, and he worshiped him. But also with his speech, he expressed his reverence to the Lord because he addressed him as Lord. He has all authority. He's master of everything. And we said that in that setting, he realized that he wasn't just master, but he was the master of his leprosy as well. I think is what led him there. <laughs> to get to him. Now, in verse 2, it also says this. Look at the end of verse 2. It says, Worship, and he worshiped them, and behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. So, we not only approach the Lord with our desires, that's where it's all got to start, or it's nothing's going to be done. But we must approach the Lord with belief in his power and submission to his will. Belief in his power and submission to his will. We must believe that the Lord is able to meet our needs as we approach him. The leper had confidence in the Lord's power and ability to meet his needs. That saw, we see that in him, by him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst. The leper had no exact promise, like we said, and little examples of someone who was a leper being healed. Very few, because you, you must understand that he didn't have the New Testament. He didn't have the story of him being healed that he could look at and say, hey, that's me, I'm going to go get healed, right? And he didn't have the story of the other lepers uh, being healed as well. He had, a, he had a few stories from the Old Testament that he could look back to if he had the privilege of hearing those stories um, in the synagogue there. I don't know if this guy um, was. It appears that because he went to the priest that he probably was a Jew and, and was going back to the synagogue there. But he believed and he had confidence. Notice what he said. He, look what he did not say. He did not say this. This is very important. If thou can, thou wilt. He did not say that. He said, if thou wilt, thou canst. Oh, just a little flipping of the words. But it's completely different. The, the first one questions if he's able to do it. The second one's not questioning if he's able. It's just, is that his will to do it or not? This might have been what he knew of, if he, if he even knew this. Look back at Numbers chapter 12 with me. In Numbers chapter 12, we're going to find here the story of Miriam, and she had leprosy. And the Bible says in verse 9 of Numbers chapter 12, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. You never want to start off reading that, do you? The anger of the Lord was kindled against them. All right, uh, against them. That's not a good thing. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked and upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days. And the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people removed from Hazaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Miriam was healed of her leprosy when Moses prayed and asked the Lord for this miracle. Here. She had leprosy. Did this, did this man know about this story? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If he did, and he heard Moses call out to God, maybe he thought, well, I can call out to him, and I can be healed. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. Look at 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5, and we come to the story of Naaman. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He, also, he was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. He was a leper. Look at verse 10. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go, because he's trying to figure out how to get rid of, the, get rid of this leprosy here. And, uh, and then Elisha comes back and he says uh, to him, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Isn't that like us? Something dramatic. We want, we want all the fanfare. And he said, I surely thought that was going to happen. I'm surprised he didn't put smack me on the forehead and I'll fall backwards. Well, I don't know. Uh, they probably didn't know about all that false things back then uh, there. But look, look, at, look at verse 12. And are not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then, when he saith unto thee, Wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all of his company, and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Well, we see Naaman. Naaman was a leper. I don't know how long he had been a leper, but he had been a leper. Uh, I can't imagine too long if he, was a, if he was a great man and he was honorable and he led our army. Surely he wasn't around all of his men all that time and getting everybody else leprosy. I don't know if it was something that just come up recently with him. But anyway, he was a leper, the Bible says. And he dipped seven times in the Jordan, uh, kind of reluctantly. He didn't want to do that, but he did. And uh, so he dipped himself seven times in the Jordan and was healed of his leprosy. Now, if you just knew these two stories, because that's what you'd have in the Word of God at that time, then he could be thinking, I'm a leper. Maybe I could be healed. Maybe my skin could become like the skin of a little baby again. And he just said, maybe Jesus can do this. I know he's been doing miracles, and I'm going to go ask. I'm going to go ask. He believed that he could do it. We should have this confidence when we approach the Lord that he had. The leper asked the Lord for the impossible. What did he ask him for? He said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. That was impossible.
What I mean by impossible is if the Lord didn't do it, it wasn't going to get done. It wasn't going to be done. The Lord likes doing impossible things. Who hears of a, of a captain of an army <laughs> getting new skin like a little baby? Right? You don't hear about it. Him turning Miriam's leprosy on her, taking it away. You just don't hear about it. That's a miracle. We need some miracles. We need some miracles in our life that only Jesus can do. By the way, salvation is the greatest miracle you're ever going to see. And I hope you've experienced it. God's still doing miracles. He's saving people every day. I believe that all around the world, thousands of people are getting saved every day. Just like the day of Pentecost. Thousands of people are getting saved all around this world. Miracle after miracle after miracle. Taking us from going to hell, being enemies with him, putting us in his family, giving us new life. The miracle. The impossible. It's impossible for you or me to do anything with God if he doesn't help us to do it. Luke 137. I just want to read part of that for you because the angel was there and told Mary. This is what he said to Mary. For with God, nothing shall be what? Impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. I think the leper might have thought that. God can do anything he wants to do. Maybe, maybe it would be his will to heal me. Luke 18, 27, Jesus told his disciples, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Yeah, it's impossible with that multitude. There ain't no way that multitude was going to heal this leper. That's why he didn't ask them. He bypassed the multitude. He said, I need Jesus. Jesus can help me if it's his will to help me. He, it's possible that he can do it. Look at Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. It says, now unto him, that's referring to God. Now unto him that is able, there's no question mark there. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That's the Holy Spirit. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. He could have done more than what the leper asked him for. Now he did what the leper asked him for. That's our God. But we limit. The Bible uses this phrase, which is a wonderful phrase, but it's, it's bad what happens. But they, but they said, you've limited the Holy One of Israel because of unbelief. We limit him. There are only two things the Word of God says that the Lord cannot do. Go to Titus with me. Titus chapter 1. Now, if you found three things, you can tell me after the service. But I know of two things. Because, you know, there's always somebody that says, well, well. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Titus chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible says, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. What can he not do? He cannot lie. The Bible tells us the Lord cannot lie. That's one of them. James 1, 13. James chapter 1, and verse 13. The Bible says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. So, the Lord cannot be tempted with evil, and he does not tempt man. Both of these things violate his sinless nature. If he were able to be tempted with evil, or if he was able to lie, then it would violate who he was. But everything else he can do. What do you need 
What do you need the Lord to help you with? We often think that's impossible. It's impossible. But that's what the Lord likes to do, the impossible. What is it that we do not believe the Lord can do? What are you thinking about right now? What do you think the Lord can't do? Well, we probably would never say it. You guys want to come up one at a time and tell me? <laughs> no, we probably would not do that. You probably wouldn't come up and do that. But in our lives, we live like the Lord can't do things. You know? Maybe we think the Lord can't save someone. You know why we know we think that? Because we don't tell them the gospel. If we thought the Lord could save them, then we would probably tell them the gospel because then we would think that they might get saved. We just told on ourselves. We did. I do that. We didn't believe. We didn't believe the Lord could save that person. And we do that all the time. We believe maybe the Lord couldn't do that or the Lord couldn't do this. And so maybe the Lord put something on your heart to do and you say, well, Lord, I just don't have the money to do that. Does he? We limit the Holy One of Israel. We don't believe He's able to do it. If we're not asking the Lord to do it, then we're saying that the Lord cannot do it. So we need to ask Him. We need to ask Him. So we believe that the Lord is able to meet our needs as we approach Him. Lord, if Thou will, wilt, Thou canst. You can do it. If it's your will. And then, he's in that same phrase, Lord, if thou wilt. We must completely submit to the Lord's will as we approach him. You believe he's able? And then we submit to his will because we just don't know if he wants to do it, we rejoice. If he doesn't want to do it, then we supposed to be rejoice <laughs> let me help you there okay that might not be our response and that's an indicator of if we're walking in the spirit or not because we're basically saying i'm a big baby and i didn't get what i wanted and i'm gonna have a pity party about it and i'm not gonna rejoice because god didn't do what i told him to do see the lord taught us to pray how did the Lord teach us to pray? Thy will be done. Talking to the Father. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. The Bible says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus was talking and he was preaching. This is the Sermon on the Mount, we call it. And he was preaching about it. He was preaching to them, Thy will be done. The will of the Father that's in heaven be done here on earth. Thy will be done. He preached about it. Then we come to Luke chapter 11 and verse 2. Luke 11 verse 2. A different time. But Jesus isn't preaching here. He's teaching. He's teaching his disciples now in a little private lesson on prayer. And not really so much how to pray as how we're motivated to pray. And he tells them in verse 2, when he's telling them about this, and he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. Almost the same exact thing that he was preaching there on the Sermon on the Mount. But you see what he taught? Thy will be done. He's showing us that submissive heart to the Lord's will for our life. Thy will be done. Look at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 
Matthew chapter 26, look at verse 36 with me. Matthew 26, verse 36. So now we have Jesus here in Gethsemane. And the Bible says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which, by the way, are James and John, if you didn't remember that. You usually hear those three because those are the three inner circle disciples, Peter, James, and John. And we have them. And began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou, what? Wilt. As thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy what? will be done. Thy will be done. Well, he preached about it. He taught about it in a private session there with his disciples. And now we see Jesus just living it out by example in the Garden of Gethsemane. It wasn't just something he preached and it wasn't something he just taught. I mean, he lived it. Father, your will be done. I mean, this is not something he wanted to do. He did not want this cup there. But he knew he had to take it as a man. He had to take this cup. And he said, thy will be done. And you know what? We must be preaching and we must be teaching. But mostly living out a life of prayer that's in submission to the Lord's will. He's our example. Submitted to God's will. We must submit our will to the Lord's will instead of trying to bend the Lord's will to our will. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but you're probably as guilty as I have been going to God and, you know, just trying to change his mind about some stuff and making him think the way you think and to make his will into your will. But that's never what prayer is supposed to be. It's never what it was intended to be. The leper said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst. The leper was not asking selfishly for healing, for personal benefit. But although that was there, but I don't think that was really what was taking place. I think it all came from a submitted heart for the Lord's will to be done. If thou wilt. It's all based on your will, Lord. I know you can do it. Will you heal me? If you do, I'm going to rejoice. But if you don't, thank you. Thank you anyway. The leper was not bargaining with the Lord. Maybe we say to buy the Lord off. All right, we got a bargain going. I don't, I don't suggest that, making deals with God. We are in no position to make deals with God. But our flesh would like for us to think that way. You know, he wasn't saying, if you heal me, Lord, then you will be my Lord and I will obey you. That's not how we should approach the Lord. Well, if you do this for me, then I'll do this for you. That is not what he was saying. He said the exact opposite. He said, you are my Lord. Is it your will to heal me? You are my Lord. Not I will let you be my Lord if you do what I'm asking. Sometimes that's how we act in prayer. The leper was not demanding the Lord to do something for him. By the way, just for the record, no man can demand the Lord to do anything for them. doesn't work that way. Now, someone forgot to tell the faith healers that 
because they do that exact thing. Name it and claim it. It's about us. He wants to give us everything. Now I can just tell God what to do and he's going to do it. You just listen to them for a little while. Listen to how they boss God around from the beginning to the end of when they're talking. Someone forgot to let them on, in on that. That we don't tell God anything. He's Lord. And he tells us what we ought to be doing. Submitted to the Lord's will. We, we get a picture of that with the leper here. To be submissive to the Lord's will in our life. And that he's able to meet our needs. What is it that we have not asked the Lord for if it is his will for us to do? You're just doing it. You're just plowing right through life and there's something you didn't even ask the Lord if it was His will to do. You just plowed right on through it. You didn't even ask. What is that? What is that in your life that you haven't asked the Lord about? What is it that your will has not gone under His will in? That's something that needs to be taken care of. If you want to see the Lord do some... Something impossible in your life, it will never happen until your will is under His will. And by the way, that's a miracle in itself, that your will can go under His will. You're going to yield? You're going to let that happen in your life? We'll be amazed at what the Lord will do for us if we will submit our will to His will. And the reason is that when we submit our will to His will, He will be glorified by what he does for us. Remember Naaman? Submitted. And he said, now I know there's only one God. It's the God of Israel. None else in all the world. That's it. Father, please take your word tonight and help us. If thou wilt. I don't know what we need tonight. But I know we need more of your will in our life. And I know we need more faith to believe you can do exceeding abundantly above all that we could imagine or think. Anything we could ask you, anything we could scheme up, you will have way more than we could ever imagine. Please help us with where you've pointed to our hearts tonight and strengthen us at this very moment. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed, altars are open. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Justin, I'm lost. If I died right now, I'm going to be on my way to hell. Where Jesus is not willing for me to go, I'm going to go against Jesus' will because I will not humble myself. I will not believe on Him and receive Him. I will not let His will become my will so I'm not going to get saved. But I am concerned about my soul. I have not got saved to this point, but I'm concerned and I... I need to get saved. And you say, that's me tonight, Brother Justin. That's me. I haven't been saved. I need to get saved tonight. You say, the Lord's speaking to me about that. Anybody raise their hand and say, that's me. That's me. This is the best place in all the world to come right with God. Right now. Not tomorrow. He might come back tonight. You might not be alive tomorrow. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to tell you what might happen. What could happen. But he's able right now to save you if you'll believe on him and receive him as your Savior. Believers, do you approach the Lord believing? What is it that you have not asked the Lord to do in your life? Is there something you haven't asked the Lord to do in your life? Would you ask him that tonight? Would you ask him right now to help you with that? Say, Lord, I thank you for showing me that tonight. Thank you that you've given me the faith tonight to believe that you're able to do this. Thank you that your word produced this faith in me that I saw tonight. I need you to help me in this area of my life. Ask him to help you. And do you approach the Lord submitting to his will? Maybe that's what the Lord's dealt with you about tonight. And you said, Lord, there's just something I've never let you have, have in my life. I've never asked you what your will is for this in my life. Never done it. Maybe that's what you need to tell the Lord tonight. 
I'm submitting to you in this area. I, I've been doing my will in this area of, of, of your life. I don't want it anymore. I want your will to be done. Maybe what I'm doing is your will, but I've never asked you about it. Would you show me what your will is? Would you be honest with the Lord there and let him help you? He wants to help you. He knew he was going to meet with that leper when he come off that mountain. He knew who was going to be back tonight to hear the message. He knew who he wanted or was going to be able to meet with tonight to help. Nothing caught him by surprise tonight. He was just waiting for that leper to come to him to get past the circumstances, to get past the obstacles, to come to him believing reverently bowing knowing that he's able and submitting to his will he's just waiting for him to come and I submit to you tonight that he's just waiting for you to come and as you draw nigh to him the Bible says he'll draw nigh to you what a beautiful picture you take a step he takes a step you take a step he takes a step Step by faith, he comes to you, he helps you. Father, we sure do thank you for speaking to us tonight. Thank you for this story of the leper. Thank you for telling us about this. Or we wouldn't have it, we wouldn't know it. Please help us tonight as we... We do want to believe you. We do want to believe you're able. We truly want to say, Lord, and we truly want to believe that you're master of all things and you have authority over all things. And we want our lives to say it, not just our lips, but our lives. Would you help our wills to be submissive to your will? May you show us even tonight, and as we, if you tear your coming, you allow us to live, Lord, as we enter tomorrow, the next day. May you convict us this week as we think about, well, I didn't even consider your will, Lord, in my life. Would you just show us that? Just help us take one step at a time in your will. And by faith, just one step at a time. May you help us to be who you saved us to be. We'll thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Until we meet again, take time to know the Lord and to make Him known. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God bless.